Okay, what we're doing now is we're moving on to the next step, which actually is sort of combining two things into one here. Uh, you would have already recognized that you have a, a bed bug issue and uh, you would have inspected your room obviously to discover that and you would then be moving on to actually treat the problem. For the purposes of our video um, in demonstrating and, and training on this uh, solution, we're going to be sort of marrying those two steps together in the sense that we're going to be showing you how you would inspect uh, the room and then also uh, set the room up uh, to be treated. Okay. So with Dave's assistance, we're going to show you today. Now, normally you would have the sheets and pillows and everything on here. We've already kind of stripped them off to speed the process up of the video. And so basically what we're going to do is take the headboard off, and then we're going to stand the bed up in an A-frame to get it set up. So Dave, with your assistance, sure. we'll get this off. Let me move the table over a little bit here so I can get better leverage. I'm going to lift from the bottom. I'm not sure if I'm unhooked here. Yep, you are. Oh, am I? Yep, you got to just go up. And we're going to come down. These are some heavy headboards. <laughs> yeah, in your property, you're going to know how to take the headboards off. Most hotels, they just slide right off. And uh, then once you have them off here, they're a little more manageable to uh, actually work with and, and move around. What you want to do is make sure this side is facing the outside of the room so when we get ready to heat the room up, if there's any bed bugs or anything on the back side of the board, we can actually get that treated, penetrated, and killed before we have to worry about putting it back up and having another reinfestation. So now we have the headboard off the wall, where before we set that up in the position we need to, we need to take care of the sprinkler systems. So most important thing, if you don't cover your sprinkler systems and you turn the system on, you will pop that and it'll cause you about five to $25,000 water damage fee and about $100,000 to replace all the drywall and paper and carpet. So that's the most important step. You can't miss that step. So what we want to do is take our outside spigot faucet. It has a loop here. You just want to kind of put it over there. And being gentle because you don't want to set the sprinklers off. These things are temperamental but not that bad where you can put these on. You pull the string tight and basically you tighten that down. Once you have that on there, you just want to make sure the quick adjustment, it's tight and down. Your smoke detectors won't have any problems. They won't set anything off as long as they're not heat sensitive. You want to check that with your, your codes and your utilities in your area. But once you have the sprinkler cover in place and it's tight on there, it's going to stay up there and it's going to hold it and you'll never have a problem breaking your sprinkler heads. So as you can see, our room is getting real ready. Uh, in this situation, the hotel that has let us use their hotel room has a protective bed, protective covers on there. Uh, they actually are bed bug proof, and there's a few brands out there that can do that. Protective bed is who they're using. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off because you don't want this to be on the room when you're heating the room up. Uh, it's very heat sensitive, so if you have these on your bed, you wanna remove those. If you don't have them on your bed, Bed Bug Heat Doctor can help you buy those and purchase those. We're a distributor of protective bed and clean rest brands. So because this is a borrowed room, we're not going to take this cover off today until we talk to the hotel management company here and make sure it's okay for us to take this back off uh, because they're in a remodel trying to get rooms up. So what we're going to do is walk you through how to inspect a room in your own properties. And so whether it's a nursing home, like we said before, or, or a hospital or something like that, basically it's all the same. You have a bed. You want to check your cracks and crevices of your mattress around the top of the bed the bottom of the bed and then we would be lifting this up and looking at the bottom of that and then also the box springs we would look around that and take that up and where you're going to see them is mostly five feet from the top of the wall here in a hotel room and then in, in, a, in a bedroom situation depending on where the closest nooks and crannies are in a hospital room if your room is set up like this basically you would look in this area of the bed uh, that would be tightest to the wall. If you're in a jail cell, you would be doing the same thing. You would be taking a look at wherever the closest area to the walls are, bottom of the mattress, sides of the mattresses, and around the bedding. Didn't you also say under the bed, uh, the bed board itself, there might be some on the bed board? 
On the headboard, yes. When we took the headboard off, we would inspect around that, and you might find egg casings or even adults in there. Uh, you'll find evidence, maybe the fecal droppings. Same with these. The screw holes are really uh, a good place where they lay their eggs. So if you see white dots in the screw holes, you'll actually see the egg casings in there. Or when we lift the bottom of the box springs and it's got the dust cover on there, you can actually see the eggs. If the felt on the bottom of the mattress and box spring is black, you'll be actually see the eggs really well through there. Okay, so as we said, we're going to set the bed frame up. Uh, we've done that off camera. What you want to do is basically, if you have a king size bed, do it like this. If you have two doubles, all you're going to do is the same thing with both beds. Uh, on the machine, we'll work both ways for king or double. The kings are easy to put up like this. It just takes a few minutes to balance them. Right now, nothing's holding this up. Uh, it's not trickery, it's just the actual balance. And that's all it takes is just a couple of minutes to learn how to balance the beds. Once you have that balanced, then we'll show you actually where the equipment's gonna be placed for a king room, and we'll explain where the, bed, the equipment's gonna be placed for a, a queen room. So what we wanna do is take our uh, 220 cord into our splitter box, which we're gonna hook up to the heater here in a second, and we're gonna plug it into the PTEC unit. And basically with the PTEC unit, all we're doing is taking the 220, 20 amp single phase, uh, back out, splitting it with our splitter box into 110 circuits, two different 20 amp 110 circuits. So basically all you'll do is, in this case, we had to pull the panel away and we'll pull the box out. We'll unplug this PTEC and then we'll plug our 220 back into the same spot. And sometimes these are on the outside wall, sometimes they're under machines, sometimes they're even direct wired. If that's the case, all you have to do is, uh, if you're a maintenance person, take the direct wire out once it's unplugged and the breaker's off and wire a female end to the, 120, uh, to the 220 circuit and basically uh, put a plug in there and you'll plug it in there and you'll have live power there. Then what you'll do is, you'll, while we, like I said, all we're doing is splitting it back down. We're gonna come over here. And on the side of the heater that has four, and I'll turn this around so you can see that, four red lights on it all go to the four plugs that's where your PTEC is going to plug into so the side that has the four red lights will have the four plugs going into the PTEC unit and we'll do that now And then I'll turn this back around so you can see this. Once you have those four plugs in, feeding off the PTEC, all four of those lights will light up orange, and you'll see your cords will all have green power to them. You know the power's coming in, and you know the coils, this is represents, each of these lights represent a coil inside the heater, and so each of these lights will represent that coil is on. So right now we have four coils that can turn on once we hook the power up to the machine. And we'll do that on this side here. Now, this unit here connects together, and basically all it is is magnets, and you, you basically face it together. The front side of the fan is the round part that sticks out a little bit. The back side of the heater is actually the flat side. So when we say back side of the heater and front side of the fan, on some of the operating instructions you'll see on our website, that's what we mean. So the round side here basically fits on the flat side here that have the nubs coming out. So the nubs fit right in the holes there. So it's real self, self easy to do, self explaining. Once it's done, you can tell that's pretty tight. It's not gonna go anywhere. And you can roll it up so you can see other things. And it will just basically store like that. So if you wanted to store it, we'll show you that in a little bit. But that's how that goes. So then here, basically, we went ahead and plugged this into the GFI in the bathroom. And basically with the GFI, if something goes wrong with the power, it's gonna shut this off, we will shut the whole unit down. And the fan that's plugged into the GFI, and we'll get that in a second, will also do the same thing. So the whole unit, if the GFI fails, will shut down. It's a safety feature we want you to use. So you're going to take this and plug it in. Now our heater is actually operational. We can actually turn this on and actually run this. Depending on the square footage of the room, this package here will do 350 square feet. As it's set up right now with one coil here and the four coils on this side, you have actually five coils going it'll do 200 square feet. To get to your extra square footage, you would just plug in each one. Now we're gonna define different circuits for these. So this needs to be one 20 amp circuit, and this one will be a 20 amp circuit, even though you have one cord on the other one. 
If you have a 20 amp circuit in the bedroom that we're in, you can use that for the two plugs next to it. You'll have seven coils. If you want to use the 20 amp circuit in the other room, we have 50 foot cords that you can run to the other rooms. So basically we have the unit set up. All the coils that we're going to use for this part of the segment right now are plugged in. Like I said, you have two 50 foot cords. You can run those to other rooms to get one more circuit. And then I think this room we checked has one circuit for the bedroom and one circuit for the bathroom. And we'll plug one of these circuits in here for the bedroom. And we already have the bathroom hooked up, the GFIs. What we're going to do next is hook the fans up. So we've run the cord from this fan into the same GFI so that if the GFI pops, the machine and fan shut down, and I'll show you how a safety feature it is. We're going to take this cord from this fan. And the reason why the fan's sitting over here in this room is because basically we're in a king size room. The room square footage allows us to move the air circulator, and that's all that does is move the air uh, around the room and bring it back down to heat it up. And so in a double room where you have two double beds, you would have this under, angled underneath the uh, A-frame of one bed, and you would have this one actually angled underneath the other A-frame, both facing the headboard wall. So when it hits that headboard wall, it bounces off, comes back down, and circulates. And that's basically the key to getting the room heated evenly, is the circulation. The more air circulation you have, the better off your room's going to be. So pulling your furniture out away from the wall about six inches and having the airflow go very well actually helps the heater work a lot better and gets the temperature faster. So we're going to take this cord from the fan. We're going to plug it into this GFI on this outlet. And this is the only thing you're going to plug into this unit. And the other unit has a GFI. They're basically for restoration. We're not going to use those for anything else. You're going to have three empty outlets, one on this one and two on that one. Do not plug anything else on those because everything here runs on higher ampage except for the fan. And that's what we've got plugged in here. So if we did that, we would blow a circuit and the fan wouldn't be able to circulate. So we want to make sure this is the only thing that we plug into the GFI, and that GFI doesn't have anything. So now we're ready to operate the unit. We're going to turn the fans on first, and then we're also going to turn the heating on. So you can see the coil actually, uh, the temperature come up on here, knowing the coils are going to be on, and you'll actually rise that up. And basically, like I said, this room is small enough, so this is all we're going to use at this point. If you need to go bigger, then you'll actually use the other coils with your 25-foot cord that we have right here, or your 50-foot cords. Now, we're going to plug this in and eventually, but we're going to do that in a minute. And so we're going to leave that here still, and we're going to come back to that. But right now, we're going to turn the fans on, and it's going to get loud. Uh, so if you hear back noise or anything, we may mute the sound so you don't have to have that picked up on my mic. So just so you know, if it goes quiet, just watch what we're going to be doing. And we're just going to turn this on high. And we're going to come over here and turn this one on. And this is just one switch that turns on. And once it's on, you'll hear that come on. Now all you have to do is come over here and hit the green button. And that is turning the unit on. And it's actually operational now. And so basically, if that temperature is going to be going up, you know you're heating up. And obviously, it's going up very quickly because the air is circulating very well in the room. And so you'll just want to watch that temperature. It'll go to 130 degrees. And that's the temperature we want to kill the bed bugs at. But temperatures between 125 and 130 on this machine doesn't mean that room is at that temperature. That's what you want to use your laser gun for and check temperatures. You'll be very surprised if the machine says 125, which is actually the ambient air temperature, your mattress and your box springs and your furniture and your walls will be at a higher temperature, sometimes 130 to 135. It won't hurt any of the furniture or the TV if we had it in the room, uh, but you're going to watch the machine just heat up. And that, when we come back, we'll cut it back and we'll show you the 131 temperature, which is the maximum temperature. And it'll drop back down to 129 and fluctuate in between 129 and 131. Basically, this is how the unit is and you're set to go. So we have the machines off now. And I'm going to show you for the extra purpose of having this coil hooked up if your room is bigger. This one was going to plug in. And basically, you're going to take this end and plug it back into the machine. And then we're just going to pull off of the circuit that's in the room. And we didn't really want to do this today because we're running lights and everything in here, so we didn't want to blow a circuit. But you would just plug this in the room and then make sure your TVs are unplugged and your lights are all unplugged so you're not drawing any power. And you'll be able to run that extra coil in this room with the one more coil in this room too. If you have two separate breakers in the room, you want to make sure you can plug two plugs, but you want to do the same plug in the same outlet for the two coils. 
So 20 amp breaker for every two coils. The one bathroom is going to be the GFI. If it's a separate coil in the bedroom, you'll plug two cords in there. Your last coil, you'll actually plug into another room or the hallway or another breaker in the room if you have another 20 amp breaker for a fridge or microwave.